Tonight, many are raising questions regarding security after the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump's life. Here from one local expert straight ahead. Plus, Jones College is rolling out its new program-based tuition pricing for the next school year. We'll have details on the change coming up. And we're going to start to see our rain chances go up as our temperatures come down a little bit by the end of the week. We'll talk more about it coming up. Your news at 10 starts right now. Tonight, WDAM 7 News is proud to be on your side with WDAM 7 News at 10. Welcome in. Thanks for being here. I'm Michael Clark. Thanks for staying up late with us after watching the Republican National Convention. We continue to follow up on questions many of you likely have after Saturday's attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. So tonight, we're turning to two Mississippians who have experience working alongside Secret Service for high profile speeches, including presidents. Courtney Ann Jackson has the latest tonight. What you saw on TV when the bullet, when it happened, is something that I had seen many a time in rehearsals. And knowing that what your role play is at the time and what the Secret Service would do. Craig Ray was special assistant to the president and deputy director of advanced operations for both Bush administrations. In that role, he worked hand in hand with the Secret Service to go over every detail of locations for events and speeches. He says watching Saturday's attempted assassination was like a punch in the stomach. Immediately started thinking, how did it happen? You know, how, how did this person get to that spot in the number one spot in event to shoot the stage? Why it wasn't protected? You, you usually start at ground zero when you're securing a venue on where the best stage location would be for, you know, camera shot, sunshine, everything. And then from the security standpoint, they work out from there. They, they go, where is the best shot for a bad guy to get a shot. He explains there's a certain checklist that applies no matter the size of the event. Jim Brinson is the deputy director of Mississippi Homeland Security. He's coordinated efforts between Secret Service and state and local law enforcement for previous visits from dignitaries, including presidents and vice presidents. It was kind of surprising based on the experience that I've had with the people that I've worked with from Secret Service. They've always been uh, very professional, uh, very detail oriented. Brinson explained what coverage would have looked like if they were tasked with an outdoor event at a location like Saturday's. More likely been a MHP or a MHP or DPS SWAT or a local SWAT member would have been there and not by themselves. They would have had other folks with them, at least two. It was close. It was way close. Courtney Ann Jackson, WDAM on your side. This week, the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, said, quote, when I say that something like this cannot happen, we are speaking of a failure, end quote. All right, let's toss things over to Patrick a little bit later here tonight. Patrick, what can folks expect later on into the evening and when they wake up tomorrow? Yeah, late edition of the 10 o'clock show, but uh, the weather is still basically about the same. We're cooling down out there tonight as we take a live look. Uh, 80 degrees out at Jones College in Ellisville right now. Not much to show you out there. It's a quiet night up in Ellisville. Temperatures are cooling down. The radar is quiet as well, but it'll start to pick up in activity over the next couple of days. Right now, it's 81 in Paddle. It's 80 in Moselle, 78 in Oak Grove, 77 in Purvis and 79 right now up into the community of Laurel. Not looking too bad tonight. As we go into tomorrow, we're going to see uh, a warm up back into the 90s we go. And again, we're going to see some hit or miss showers, uh, maybe a little bit more coverage than today, but uh, we're going to be kind of in the same boat as this afternoon. Some of you will get rain, some of you will not. But if you don't get rain, don't worry because rain chances go up in a big way late this week. We'll talk more about it in your full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Patrick, thanks. Tonight, the Hattiesburg City Council voted to approve working with Neil Schaefer for engineering studies on roads around Tatum Park and a master plan for North Main Street. Now, the measure allows the city to study what roadways could look like in the future, along with a potential price tag at Tatum Park. The city is looking at adding turning lanes for Bonhomie Road, WSF Tatum, and an access road from WS Tatum Boulevard to Tatum. The city also wants to look at developing a master plan for North Main Street. The council is agreeing to enter a conceptual study with Neil Schaefer uh, to get a lot of neighborhood engagement, a lot of stakeholder input, and then hopefully formulate a plan that we can then have a, a conceptual design and a cost estimate that we can go and try to get the money to fund such a project.
Since this is still in the early stages, there's no word on an estimated timeline, but we'll keep following up. Jones College has a new way for students to save some money on their tuition. It's a part of a plan that also simplifies and streamlines the school's tuition process. Charles Harrington has more on that tonight. Administrators at Jones College have a new plan which changes the way students pay tuition. The purpose of it is just to simplify the process. It's a very complex pricing structure in the old days. Last year it was a 14-page document. We got it down to one. A new program-based tuition structure, which is in effect this academic year, customizes tuition based on what a student studies. We want it to be one price for full-time students and one price for part-time students. And that is dependent upon what their major might be. There are no hidden fees, there are no added book fees, no added health fees, no technical fees, no lab fees, no IT fees. There are no, no other fees. Smith says the simpler and more streamlined system will also save the average student about $200 each semester. It's to help with access and affordability and to really focus on our mission as a college and that's to promote the upward mobility of our citizens in our region. Students we spoke with today like the new plan. It sounds like it's going to be um, something great coming to the school, um, especially for um, people with low income, families, um, mothers that's you know going to school. The school says most students now only have to take 12 credit hours per semester to qualify as full-time. Last year, most full-time students had to take 15 credit hours each semester. Charles Harrington, WDAM7, on your side. More details about the new tuition plan can be found on our website, WDAM.com. Laurel Main Street is applying for the Mississippi Main Street Revitalization Grant, and they would use the money for a pavilion stage on Library Street to Carroll Garden Boulevard for tourism events. It would be about $500,000. The city gave the green light to match $125,000 from its tourism fund for the project. The city would be working with Neil Schaefer for a conceptual plan that would be included in the application. It'll give us an opportunity to offer more things to the people, local people and the uh, citizens coming in from other places. So it'll just, it'll, it'll open downtown up more than it already is. We're very excited that we have the opportunity to apply for this grant and we're very, very grateful for the Mississippi Main Street organization and the legislature for putting this together because it means so much in our small towns. We're told the application will go before the legislature next year. Anytime there's a major news event, campaigns see a spike in donations. I'm Molly Martinez with a breakdown of the numbers.